Good day, everyone, and how's everybody doing today? How you doing? Good. Yeah? Feel better? Yeah. Yeah? Just, just let off the demons? No, not really. Whatever. Great. Um, hey, Morel in the house. Ooh, speaking of Morel, check this out. Hold on. Ah! So we just got done making these. These are some cool little tweeter pods for this Toyota. And we are putting in a set of da, 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 six by nines. That's right. These are the Tempo Ultra six by nines. These things here are insane. Like the amount of base, that's right, base that comes out of these bad boys are nuts. And then we have the cool tweeter that is gonna go up on the dash here. We made these awesome, as you see, just, just got this one done. Put the little five-star logo in it right there. Not a lot of room to put the big, you know, name as far as the truck goes, but there we go. These are gonna go up on the dash, looking all snazzy. So yeah, some of my favorite six by nines for sure. Um, what do you think? I'm thinking you're right. Yep. Thinking you're right, yeah. yep. Yeah, tons of bass. God, these things are impressive. Uh, this is going to go into this. This is getting this guy right here. This is the D61200. It's going to power everything, getting the RCA's power wires, zero gauge, all. It's going to mount into this little pocket right here. Got the little wire. It's going to go there. The RCA's are going to go out this side. Now, the biggest problem we've run into with this car is this door is already done, um, is the zero gauge where there is no room at all to run zero gauge anywhere in this car so what we've come up with is we had to do a lot of preliminary like how are we going to do this so there's a gap that runs along here all right and that gap is just enough we pulled all this back and we actually put some four there's some zero gauge in there just to dummy it up so we have to pull this seat out we're going to run the wire up that way and then the signal wire will come across the back here and go up that way. And then underneath this seat, we're going to hide the crossover. So we'll make a bracket and put the crossovers there. Or maybe we should put them here. Ooh, hmm, don't know, that's a thought. Anyways, so the crossovers are gonna go somewhere over there. Hadn't really thought about it much, but hey, that's an idea. Put the crossovers, um, in the rear there where the cargo tray is up behind that cargo tray because there's like two inches of gap there might be a good spot for them out of the way either way yeah. we'll figure that out but first thing you like under the seat first thing we had to do was go ahead and get this oh somebody's favorite word go ahead was go ahead <laughs> said it again get this all cut out done there He's got both the tweeter mounts. He can move on. Now, back to business. Today is Monday. This is the first day back video-wise. We've been here, we've been working the past two weeks. It's not like we had, you know, Christmas off like a lot of you and maybe Christmas or New Year's Day off. Otherwise, we've been here the whole time. We just needed a break, spend time with the families after work and stuff like that. Um, so that's why there haven't been any videos. But today is the first video back and that was the audio control visit. Now, for those of you that follow me on The Boring Life of Dina Haley, there's going to be a second part to that video where we'll get to see everything else that happened outside of just visiting there. We, we had a whole field trip that we did. We went up in the Space Needle and had a lot of fun. So The Boring Life is going to get that. And then there's going to be a third video, which is me talking with Brandon, the, the designer, engineer of a lot of their products. We had a big conversation about the new um, LC2 Pro and the LC1, LC2, LC2i Pro and the LC1i. Okay. Um, and then, so we have, slow it down there on the Alpine DSP, relax. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's get through this first. Okay, don't worry, we're gonna cover everything. Anyways, so we had a big long conversation where we were talking about integration and all that. And it was just, it was a really long interview and I, I didn't want it to slow down the uh just the visit that we had 
So that is going to be a third video out from that. Now, as far as the LC1i, LC2, they gave us some of those to play with before we went out there and we had to bring them back with us when we went back. So we were able to actually do a video on those as well, um, a beta video. I'm liking these beta videos. So we have a fourth video on that, which is gonna be the beta video. Now, I don't wanna just release all these audio, con video, audio control videos all at once. So there are a couple other videos that are gonna get released too. We have the dash kit for the Dodge Ram that we filmed before we went on vacation. So that beta video, that'll go up probably Wednesday. Um, so a lot of stuff, but Tuesday, Tuesday, we're gonna have a live show. Well, yeah, anyways, tomorrow, tomorrow Tuesday, we're gonna have a live show, we're gonna, and, and the reason why we're doing it tomorrow, not tonight. Now we are gonna be doing a live show on Facebook tonight. The Car Audio Talk with Dean and Fernando live show on Facebook tonight at 6.30. It's happening. We're going to add Q&A, the whole nine yards. However, new stuff from CES we can't talk about until tomorrow. So we have to wait. All right. So all the manufacturers that are sending us their information that we've dealt with earlier in the year and so on and so forth. The, the criteria is we can't release them until the 7th. So tomorrow night, we're going to come on and we're going to show you pictures and everything that we have of all the new products that are coming out from Alpine, Kicker, um, uh, Rockford, Kenwood, everyone that we can, we sent tons of emails out and we're hoping that everyone is, is responding back slowly but surely. So there's going to be lots of products we're going to talk about. Um, and that, and that'll be it. There'll be, it's, that's going to be fun. So that'll be tomorrow night. Tonight's just going to be regular Q and A. So as far as that Alpine question you had, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow night, Brian. So just be patient. What was I doing? I was, I was going to do something. Over. Oh, secondly, uh, back to audio control for a minute. If you've seen the audio control video and you sat through the whole thing, you have to sit through the whole thing. Um, this kind of harkens back to when we did the kicker video. Why and don't we tell them tonight? We're going to, but tune in tonight uh, at 630 Eastern Standard Time on the Facebook show because we're going to talk about something that was talked about in that video. And if you were if you followed us through the kicker video, yeah. this is going to be very similar to that, but cooler. Uh, here goes more money out the window. Always, right? It's all about the money. Anyways, so definitely check out tonight uh, and for the rest of this week. Actually, for about the rest of this month, we because there's there's yeah, as you figured out, there's gonna be there's gonna be a giveaway. Okay, so just be nice, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> they they want to know. They're like, I don't want to wait till tonight. Um, yeah, but yeah, so <laughs> got to watch tonight. There is a giveaway. There's an audio control giveaway. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. And if you caught the video, if you've watched the video all the way through to the end, mm -hmm. you know what it is because we show it in the video. We, it's a big deal. It's pretty cool. I'm super excited about this one because uh, we thought about it after we went to Kicker. And I was like, damn it, we should have done this. And audio control's like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So definitely want to check that out. What speakers do you recommend to replace the factory speakers that work with your stock hedge unit and a Jetta beat system? Ooh. Mmm. I got nothing. I got nothing I'm going to recommend on that one. Uh, the only beat systems we've done, we pulled those things out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't honestly have a good answer for that, man. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Last one we did, we stripped the system out and yeah, put all new stuff in, new yeah. power, new everything. You know, the problem with replacing in or integrating into one of those premium sound systems, sometimes the unloads are weird. Also, it's EQ'd for those speakers. So when you put other speakers in, it doesn't always sound that good. Sometimes it will sound worse. worse. Um, but yeah, mm. wish I had a good answer on that one. But anyways, so I want to show you guys, but I'm not going to because Fernando asked me not to. But tonight... Definitely check it out. Just, and then yeah. Tuesday, you, you're going to want to check it out to see all the new stuff that's coming out. Yes, anything sounds weird. Yeah, it does sound really bad. Those tweeters and that are horrendous. Um, what we did in the last one is we went with... So this was a problem. So it has stop start. And the customer was like, didn't really understand what we were asking him. So we ended up going to the Q Class 1005, which really isn't made to work in stop start. So he has to hit the button every time he gets in the car because he doesn't want to bypass it. Okay, whatever. We did a front stage subwoofer upgrade. So we brought in the signal for the tweeter and the mid-range into the Q-Class 1005, re-EQ'd it, and then add a subwoofer to the back. That tweeter in that car is dismal at best. It is the worst sounding system, but that's what we did to get that car to sound really nice. 
What did we go with for speakers with that one? Was that the, um, did we do the Hertz? I think we did the Hertz. It had to be the Hertz. It was either that or Focal. I don't remember. I think it was Hertz, because he's a rocker. I think it was, it was the heat. I think we did the uh, Milli Pros. I don't remember. It's, it's, I, I know it was like only like two months ago. So, um, anyways, that's that. That's what we used to fix that. Uh, can I run two different alternators that different amps and two different batteries? Uh, there again, don't know. Man, you guys are asking crazy, just like off the wall questions today. I don't know that one. Uh, Mecha Man is the alternator guy. That'd be the guy you'd want to talk to. Um, so if I can't help you, I'll refer to somebody that probably can. So they give it that. What part number are those morels? Now that I can help you with. Thank you. Uh, we have the, uh, where is the model number? Do me a favor. Oh, what are these? Hey, there we go. It is the Tempo Ultra 692, yep. six by nine components. So you get the mid bass, you get the tweeter. It also comes with these two. These are, these are like, all right. These are little flush mount angles, but these are neat in that, here, pull the bag off of this one for me, will you please? So it, for those of you guys that are Honda Civic fans, back in the day, Honda Civic used to have this really uh, cool mounted tweeter. It was like this. Alpine used to do these too that you could get, but Honda had it from the factory. So what this allows you to do is when you mount it in the door, it automatically adds an angle to it, makes it look a little bit cooler. So if you, if you have to cut it in, it's pretty neat. I like this. This is the only guys that do this that I've seen in a while. Yeah, this is, I don't know what this is like, silly. This is just put it yeah, there. yeah, that's yeah. just silly. But, um, and then of course it gives you the cup, this cup here, which is what we're using, mounted in the back, cut the little screws off so they don't scratch it. And there you go. Give you a different bracket. Yeah, I mean, th that's nice because a lot of manufacturers don't even do that anymore. So yeah, looks sexy. Yeah. Southern California in the house. What's going on? Oh. Dean, those were all 6x9 components. How would they sound in a 2007 Dodge Ram, Dodge Caliber, with the with the mid in, mid in the door and the tweeter up in the dash? Before Okay, so, like, that is pretty much every car out there right now. And to answer that question, you mean to have the speaker down here and the tweeter up here? They'd sound great. That's what we're doing in this car. Yeah, I mean, every every system we've used those in, that's pretty much how they go. So we've not had any issues. We love the way they sound. It's a, It's got a lot of sound coming out. I'm back to work today after being off for 17 days. Dang, Bobby. 17? Yeah. What? Audio control amps. Do they need inline fuses after the distribution block? No. They are fused quite well. So one of the nice things about the audio control is they love their fuses. So they take care of that headache for you. So you can just use distribution, um, no fuses in the, the, they'll take care of themselves. You're all good. So you can do as many of these as you want. There's no reason to double fuse it. They'll, they'll take care of themselves. Uh, how would you replace the crappy factory sub in the rear deck of a Honda Civic 2019? Well, I would pull it out, get an LC2i, put it in and then put a sub in a box and not replace that rear deck one because if honda could make it sound better they would have but they didn't and it sucks so rear deck speakers eh, not that impressive i mean if you wanted to keep the rear deck i suppose you could sound treatment the hell out of it maybe put some kind of i don't know i've never had one sound good no no <sighs> Already sealed off the trunk fence. Okay. Yep. How tall? How to identify? How to identify where a leak is coming from? It's super small. It only happens when. Okay, when it's raining. Oh, you think subs sucking in, sucking in water from the outside? All right. So we had this problem once. Remember the Toyota? Was it a Toyota? Yeah. Wow. That were was leaking water into the car and the door. That was that's what I yeah, so what you, what you what we had to do was bring a hose in, hook it up to the faucet, and then Fernando just stood outside the car with the hose running it constantly over the back of the car, and or the front the, the driver's door. And I sat in the car and waited for the water to come in, and we eventually figured out what it was. It was the silliest thing I've ever seen. It was just bad design on their part. But the way Toyota makes these adapters, 
is, you know, it, it, it's perfectly uniform and it has this rubber gasket on it. Well, in our world, because, you know, things are universal, they have all these extra holes. What was happening is that the speaker was sitting like this and the screw hole was here and this hole right here, this one, there was nothing there. So water was actually pooling on the inside of this bracket and then leaking down and coming through that hole into the car. It was the silliest thing I've ever seen, but obviously the fix was simple. Just fill in the hole, call it a day, and life is good. So yeah, strange things, weirdest stuff, but running a garden hose over everything, you know, with a buddy, and you're good to go. Yeah, that's it. Uh, would you, would, would you with Focal K, KX2s or just the K2s with audio control LC? Hmm, I go big. I always go big. KX. Yeah, go big, go big. The tweeter is so much nicer on the bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have, you have one of each tweeter. Mm -hmm. It's just... Maybe the next tweeter. time we'll grab a set of the two. We have both of the tweeters here. Yeah. Fernando's got them both. Um, the tweeter that comes in the right bigger here. set. You got it? Really mm -hmm. easy? It says it's right here. Oh, yeah, there you are. Yeah, look at this. These are way bigger. Hold on. These are way bigger than what comes. This is the much, this tweeter. This is this is the bad boy right there, boy. Yeah, this Ooh. is the big tweeter. That's the bigger tweeter. Yeah. This tweeter's nice. Hold on. Look at him. He's going all out today. And this is the old tweeter. Yeah. So we'll just set them right next to one another. So this is the ba This is the normal. This is what you get. And then this is the bigger one. This is K2s. And this is KX2s. Yeah. Get that one. Don't get me wrong. They both sound amazing. Sound amazing. This one just sounds a little more amazing. And that's, yeah. that's really what we're going <clears throat> for here. So there you go. You, you decide. I'll be making an appointment soon. You bet. Uh, where do you guys get the cool protectant sleeve for power and ground? All right. So basically, you're talking about the cool braided loom, like this stuff right here. We go to a place. There's a couple different places. One, so we, we buy from different vendors, obviously. So when we're buying our cool shrink wrap like this, we get this from Wire Care. Now, Wire Care does sell this stuff here, but we have a distributor here in Florida that's called Electroduct, this guy right here. And they have an online store and you just order everything online. Uh, they have a phone number too, but don't bother to call it. Here's their website right here. So there's all your information. And then if you, like I said, if you wanna have this stuff made, that is wirecare.com. Otherwise, and, and there again, Wirecare sells a bunch of stuff. So like they sell terminals and, and these guys just sell like this sleeving stuff and like some shrink wrap and that's it so like we get the multicolors this the half inch multicolor that we use we get that from them yeah so yeah electroduct but otherwise we get stuff from wire care uh sorry for typo i'm driving that's okay uh everybody does bobby what's up like freebies yeah uh ever had door speakers get wet after mounting why is that how do you prevent it of course speakers all right so speakers are made to be like they're made to get wet they're not made to play in water so it's not like they're a marine speaker but the, the occasional getting wet is a normal thing they're going into the door of a car you know so when you roll your window down and, and it's raining all that water sheezes off and comes into your door that's why in your door you know if you have these these little holes right well okay there they are there's the hole there these drip out the water that comes into the door so you know this is supposed to stay dry but as you can see there's little holes here there's little holes here and when you're doing 60 miles an hour rain is going to get into these holes and it only takes a little bit of rain and then what happens is, is the water comes down off of the door it does this all right, so it comes down and it does this, which throws it onto the inside of the door. That's why that vapor barrier that's on the door panel is so important because that keeps all that moisture out of the inside of the car. So good. And then that's why, of course, making a speaker bracket that fits the hole is important too. And if, you know, because that keeps water out of the car as well. 
But then the water will run down the inside and then go out through the bottom. But it's these little tiny holes like this that cause the water to get in there. But there again, it's okay for a speaker to get wet. You just don't want to submerge it. What is your what is your opinion about MB MB Lab products? Meaning MB Court? Uh, I really don't have one. I haven't haven't heard a new pair in a while. Ever had? Okay, here we go. Wish you guys had a shop in Chicago. Hmm. Yeah, maybe during the summer. <laughs> it's way too cold out there for me. Four channel amps. You want to bridge both channels, both for front. Can I use one RCA or do I need a YRCA? I know y'all could do it on my kicker, only using one RCA, but can I damage anything if I try? Okay. Most of the time you are gonna need a Y jack. And the reason for that is you're bridging a pair of channels. So panel, channel one and channel two. Let's go over the amplifier here. And even though this is all done internally. All right. so. I want to take channel one and two and just have it come out of here. So I'm gonna take, you know, a positive from this one and negative from that one. And I'm gonna run that off to a speaker. So both these have to be left. Now, if an amplifier has that switch that says like channel inputs two, channel inputs four, channel inputs six or whatever, most of the time it says two or four. If I set it to two, what it's doing is it's taking the signal that is in one and moving it over to three and the signal that's in two and moving it over to four. I don't want that. I want one and two to be left and I want three and four to be right. So what I have to do is take, you know, my right RCA and Y jack it into those two, take my left RCA and Y jack it into these two. That's how that's done. Kind of sucks, but if you want balance and fader, that's how you have to do it. Some amplifiers, which I haven't seen in a while, you can just plug in one and you can just plug in three, but most don't have that feature anymore, unless you get something like this, which is a DSP amplifier, in which case you can direct sound to do it everything you want. But yeah, you get the idea. Hello from Chile. Hello. Hey, my voltage fluctuates between 12.5 and like 15.5. Wow, I swapped, I swapped out my system so I have no gear in the truck. All I have is 270 amp alternator and okay, batteries, 2011 Sierra, what's wrong? Hmm, there again, another alternator question. Mm -hmm. I'm not a mechanic, so trying to understand stuff like that, uh, you definitely wanna talk to a mechanic that is more versed in alternators. You know, something like that could be a bad voltage regulator. That seems to be what most people say caused that. But there again, not a mechanic, not gonna know the answer to that one. Thankfully. I don't like I don't like engines, I like stereos. Okay, is that good? All right, yeah. well I think that's it for now. We're gonna wrap up five minutes of five star. Just to recap tonight, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Be on Facebook, watch the show, we got a Q&A, and we're gonna do an announcement about the audio control video that we had up today so make sure you watch that watch it all the way through to the end watch all the way through to the end watch all the video watch all the video and you'll see what we're going to talk about it's a big surprise <clears throat> but or if you were here for the kicker video you'll like that morel loves us and we love her we love right. them hey speaking of morel casey make sure he emails me the stuff for tomorrow's show i need i need he hasn't emailed me yet so i need to get the new morel stuff that's coming out please okay and that's it we're gonna head on out we'll see you guys tonight We'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow, remember, it's going to be the show, 6.30. It's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Where all you guys like to hang out. So we'll remind you again tomorrow and tonight and all that other stuff. All right, guys, we're out of here. You have a wonderful night. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Always? <laughs> You're excited because you don't even know what we have. <laughs> you know what we I'm saying as far as the products go. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we've just been putting the list together like like mad fiends. I, I was up till what, 3.30, 3 o'clock last night, finishing up the PowerPoint. So we edited three videos last night. Um, the PowerPoint for this today, uh, Boring Life of Dean and Haley, our trip to Washington. Uh, make sure you go over and check that out. Gives you all the behind the scenes stuff that we did while we were in Washington at uh, Audio Control. And then last night's video, re, re, you know, the, the rebroadcast of that. Mm -hmm. That was a pain. 
But anyways, today is Tuesday, and as promised, we're going to be going on to YouTube in about eight, maybe six minutes, and we're going to be doing what we know uh, for CES 2020. We had a, as many vendors as we could send us information about anything new they have coming out. Uh, we also asked a lot of vendors if there was anything new, you know, so stay tuned. Make sure you head over to YouTube where we're going to be doing this live, and we got a whole presentation set up that I toiled with all last night we're getting updates as we speak new stuff is coming in so as the show ends or, or goes through we'll we'll plug the phone in and actually get that and you're in <clears throat> vegas hey from ces in vegas you actually get to be there we're not there we're not that cool no uh, who's who's in vegas uh funny toe oh, um can't wait hurry up i know i know we just wanted to come on here and be like hey make sure you go over to youtube check us out we're gonna be live in four minutes now i know right time just flies Three, <laughs> two one but, yeah and we're not nah, yeah exactly kidding. so it's exciting uh you know it obviously be more exciting if we were there it's just not in the cards um because we're going to too many other trips this year mm -hmm. and that one you know it was like sema or ces where would you rather be where would you rather see us at where would you rather like SEMA is definitely going to be the cooler one. But a lot of companies still put out new stuff. Yeah. And even though some companies put stuff out in SEMA that you don't know about yet because they're not, you know, it's not like the most popular stuff in the world. Um, and then, you know, that they red labeled here today just so we could talk about it. Um, this guy here. Anyways, so we're super excited to have some products here on the counter. Not a ton, but we have a lot of pictures. Um, John is hook, hooking us up. Knowledge Fest, baby. You know it, Bobby. Um, so we've been getting pictures constantly, and so we'll have a lot of stuff to show you. And I'm not going to ramble on. Mm -hmm. That's it. You got anything? No. I don't know. Kenwood review time. Kenwood was a funny one. Um, I'll say it here just because I know they're not going to watch it. What they're doing is they're doing a staggered release. So they're, like, releasing stuff on the 7th, stuff on the 8th, stuff on the 9th. So they embargoed us to where we can only release certain things today the nice thing is the stuff that we are going to release is all the stuff you care about so right right but they right. didn't send any pictures which kind of sucks so we just have to talk about it but that's okay i mean i don't think they changed the look so much as you know we just want to know what they're going to do yeah more stuff i can't afford <laughs> slow it no, down no. you might be okay on this one so there yeah. are some products that yeah you might be you might be looking at i'm just saying the deck is my only concern. Mm. Dean, how much weight have you lost? Honestly, I don't know. I don't track it anymore. Um, every morning I take my blood pressure and, and I write down whether I've run the night before or not. And that's all I do. I don't, I don't get caught up in the weight gain anymore. I just eat as healthy as I possibly can. Uh, today was uh, apple and a banana. Tonight will be, apparently apple tonight's gonna be, tonight's gonna be chicken. Uh, yeah? I, I ate chicken yesterday. I had, uh, I had, I don't know what I had last night. Oh, I know what I had, uh, uh, some keto thing or keto thing or whatever it is she calls egg, egg roll in a bowl. Oh. I don't know. It's really good. It's really good. Um, anyways, I'm 50 down. Dude, that's the best, man. Way to nice. go. Killing it. I know. Getting ready. Bathing suit weather's right around the corner, right? I got my yeah. Speedo lined up. Oh, okay. No, I don't. Uh, going for another 100,000. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, it, I gotta do better than a thousand. I gotta do better than a thousand because I did a thousand this year, so I gotta do. Be I gotta. I gotta do better. So um, I'm still wrapping my head around it and trying to come up with what I want to do. But mm -hmm. um, I, I really want to do two marathons this year. We were talking about it. I want to. I want to try to do two. I only did one last year. Did my first one, but I want to do two. I want to try to do two, and I think that'll be a big accomplishment there. Yeah. Um, right now it seems like a pipe dream, but. I did one last year, so, you know, let's see how it goes. <laughs> I can't tell you that. I know, right? It's easy to do, man. We got good food here. Uh, all right. Well, listen, we're getting close to the time, so we're going to wrap this up. All right. Uh, update. Found leak. Oh, you found the leak. Uh, all the gasket rotted out in the rear window. Ooh. Right. So I used two tubes of special window sealant. Fixed it. Okay. As day is your leaks. Hmm. Use UV light. And oh, and liquid to test. Good idea. 
There you go. Good on, good on that. Well, I'll have to remember that one. Use a UV liquid and then use a UV light. You'll be able to see where the leak, where the leak is. That's pretty. Uh, you know, so it's like cool. that NCI type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. job. Good idea, man. Cool. All right. Like I said, we're going to go because this is almost time. So head over to YouTube and get ready. We're going to start our What We Know About CES 2020. That's the Consumer well, we Electronics have, Show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So here we go. Lima Peru in the house. All right, guys. Hey. We'll see you in a minute. YouTube. Hey guys, it's early Wednesday. It's early Wednesday. I know. Hey, that's a notification. Five star went live. <laughs> that's right. So the reason why we're here live early this morning um, is the bay's empty. We've got a car coming in that's going to be here for the next two days, but he's not going to get here until that clock says 12. So we're doing a little prep work. Uh, we're getting the box ready. It's going to be a Toyota Tundra? Tundra, because the Tacoma was yesterday at this so this is toyota week anyways the reason why i wanted to come on is there was a comment yesterday about the arc audio subwoofer this guy sitting right here and someone had made the comment with the magnet on the front which i want to point out bose has been doing it like this for years in the automotive world corvette has it like that in the doors they put them in the tons of cadillac rear decks Mercedes-Benz uses it. There's a lot of manufacturers that use it, all right? So it's, it's not like it's new technology that ARC came out with. It's just they've taken it to the level that ARC needs to take it. Anyways, my point is, is one of the comment was putting the magnet in the front like that is going to make it very hard to use because that magnet sticks out so far. And I was like, you're just not getting it, okay? And because we're using shallow mount drivers in this particular box, this is a box we have made for the Toyota Tundra. We have we have this one made. Um, it doesn't come from anybody. Nobody makes it. It's just uh, we have Sean used to work for Bright Star. Still makes us this box. And, and what it's built based off of is a Rockford box uh, for their P3 woofers. But it's a dual dual box, of course, inset for the magnet. Okay, really? Okay. Now. What we got set up right here, guys, is the arc woofer, and we have the P3 woofer with the grill. Now, this is a P3. This is substantially cheaper than this woofer here. What we really should be showing you is like a T1, because a T1, this is even taller, because, and this is even thicker, because a T1, so much of the driver actually comes out of the top. And I was kind of bummed about it, then, I, then we set it up, I was like, wait a minute. Let's take a look at this. So. Looking at this, all right, so there's five eighths of an inch difference in the height of the mounting, okay, between this top here and this bottom here, all right? That's not to say how much shallower this mounts. So, I mean, if you go from the bottom here to the bottom here, but what you wanna see is where this magnet sits to the top of this grill, okay? So this, without a grill, just this magnet here, you know, so like if this was the floor, protecting it okay obviously you can go way farther in all right and the airspace on this is minimal like we talked about last night uh, 1.1 cubes it's it's almost nothing and i think that's like optimum and you can like 0.8 anyways so look okay this now if we if we measure from the top of this to the bottom of that and then we measure from the top of this to the bottom of that this is a half of an inch more, meaning that if this was the, what we were worried about, this sticks up a half of an inch more. But as you can see here, it is, it's, it, it's like, yeah, okay. So, grab, hey, you know what? Grab, grab that, grab that, Ooh, and set, set that on top of the, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, all right, you see what I'm saying here? So this magnet is not a hindrance. This, this magnet is actually working out pretty well because you, this could be the floor. If you're down firing this or in, it's, this could be the floor because this doesn't, this doesn't vent, this doesn't do anything. And you're still getting way more use out of this woofer than out of that woofer. So, okay. So before you make blanket statements like, hey man, that's that's useless, it's bad idea, maybe use that old brain of yours and, and, and 
you know, actually think about some of the usefulness you'd have for this. Now, Fernando just, of course, went over and did this. All right, flip that one over too, you might as well. Okay, so in most applications, this is what this is gonna look like. Like if you're putting it in some kind of a down firing box. And there again, you're still, you're still good. Still more advantages to this than there is to that. Okay. And we talk about space. Yeah. 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 Like so, I, I mean, the other thing too is keep in mind this little area here. So, like, if this is going behind a seat, this is the only area you have to worry about. Okay. Whereas, all right, you can't. You getting what's going on here? Uh, you can't please everybody. Oh no 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 no. You you definitely and trust me. We've given up on the the attempts to try to please everybody. Our job is to just, I like to look at it as, we just put the information out there, you do with it what you will. In some cases, helping with a little bit more information is always a good thing. So someone had said, hey, and it's like, okay, that's a fair question. Let's take a look at it and see what it is in reality. Because as we all know, we like to jump to conclusions and do bad things. I don't like to do bad things. I don't like to do, do bad things. I'm not, I'm, no, well. Yeah, sometimes when I forgot to plug the microphone, you know. Or, no, you plugged it in. Oh, well, you turn it on. <laughs> hey, it's a mic, man. These things happen. Who really wants to hear us talk anyways, right? Yeah, um, anyway. Anyways, so I, I thought that would be cool to show that and just kind of like go over it. Now, because it is the next day um, and Kenwood has cleared other things to be talked about, yeah. I'm still kind of bummed about that, that uh -huh. they didn't give us any information on the floating screen. Right. Like, right. nothing. Nothing at all. Mm. And I'm like, how did, really? Hmm. Somebody's smoking those things. Pioneer booth at CES is huge. Oh, it always is. Which oh, is um, I just saw something from all oh, the Viper lovers. Oh. They're going to come out with, with the, the mirror. With the mirror. Yeah, I saw that too. I got Dude, the Dude, I was reading it, I don't and that's that. awesome. What is it? It's crazy. Be? What is um, it? It's a security mirror. Um, okay. You lock it. You can see the inside is recording in the inside and the surroundings. So it takes uh, place of your mirror up on your window. Right. Or is it a secondary mirror? I, I don't know I don't either. how it looks. I'm going to say is this secondary, like one of those that clips in. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. But I got the, the email this morning. the functionality that it's going to do. So it's, it's got it's cameras. Awesome. Yes. So it's a mirror with cameras, works off of arm disarm. So Yeah. Um, you can use it as a standalone. Okay. Uh, use that might like be uh, recording. Yeah, so kind of like the uh, this this um, GPS tracker. Right. Correct. So um, now it's gonna work better with the DS4 system. Yeah. So this is this is let me get this out of here. This is the GPS tracker that they have, and the idea behind this is you can just plug it into your OBD2, use your phone to figure out where your car is because this is cellular. Um, yeah. This is made as a standalone consumer product that anyone can buy. Right. However, you can pair it up with the DS4, and then you can control your door locks, car start, and all that other stuff through this module here. It, it plugs in, and it's Bluetooth, and it's all that other. It's cool. So now they have a mirror that is going to do similar stuff like that also. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Viper, Viper Smart provides... Motoring solution for consumers if integrate several advanced technologies into the single product, including 4G LTE based as always Ooh. connected systems. It's so I wonder if that's going to have the connect. That sounds like it's going to have this maybe built into it. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. That, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll get back to Kenwood. I'll get back to Kenwood. Yeah. So that's that's. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what I was going to say about Kenwood is, so they have the high-res speakers that are out right now. They're, mm -hmm. in my opinion, probably the one of the most gorgeous speakers ever made. They have this elaborate um, copper piece that comes out of the top of it that's machined, and it's just, it's a beautiful speaker. I'll probably just buy a set and keep just because it's one of the most overthought speakers I think ever made like if you went to somebody that's like super gaudy and said hey design me a speaker this is what it would look like um, they sound amazing but they had one flaw if it, if it can be considered a flaw they only had a power handling of 50 watts and the reason why they had a power handling of 50 watts is because they said all right 
Everybody, active, active, active. Everybody wants to go active. Passive, big crossover, suck up power. Oh, we don't want that. Not true. Anyways, so what they did is they designed this, believe it or not, this is a thing. Um, home manufacturers do this all the time. You actually design the speaker so that it has natural roll off points uh, built into it. So you don't need big passive crossover banks. The speaker does it for you. All right. I know it's insane, right? Um, so they built the speaker like that, which means it had a lower power handling because there's no giant passive crossover there that you have to power through. So when manufacturers say it has 120 watts of power handling, what? Well, so you can get all that sound through that giant passive crossover bank. When you take that out, the power handling, believe it or not, goes down some because there's that, that thing is gone. So by not putting a big passive crossover in there, the power handling was low. You know, it's like 50 watts normal, 100 watts RMA, you know, peak, whatever. So everyone was like, oh, this speaker sucks because it has no power handling. And, right. and I understand this because, like, I've tried to sell them in the past, and people come in, and the, the guys that are like, what's the power handling on this? And you're like, uh, 50 watts, 70 people watts. And they're like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, no, that's not going to be loud. And it's like, you got 4,000? It's like, dude, it has, like, 93 efficiency. I mean, it's, like, stupid. It's like, yeah, they're great. So for the past two, three years that the speaker's been out, it's just been a hard sell. Mm -hmm. Really it's hard sell. It's a nice speaker. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> one of the most gorgeous speakers yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but now... But now, things have changed. They've redesigned the whole line. They come with big, passive crossovers, and they have like 100... Literally, the headline says, uh, Exelon comes out with new high-res speakers with 150-watt power handling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I guess we'll be able to sell them. They're ugly in the sense that they look like every other speaker out there. Um, yeah, they change the color. They change used to it, be like yeah, a that, yellow Oh, they're just gorgeous. Just, gold. Just yeah. gaudy as black. hell. Now they're black. You know, it's like, hey, we have black speakers just like everyone else. So basically what they did is they came out with a Me Too speaker because that's what everybody wanted. Right. It's kind of a shame, but now we have a, a, an Exelon high-end. I'm assuming they did it. For the customers. Oh, well, they but did that's it. That's what they want. Yeah, they you know, they, like, they okay, tried to think out. We want. Well, they tried to think outside of the box and come up right. with a speaker that mm -hmm. was different than everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And what we got is no one liked it, and it became a me too. And, and it's not like people ever heard it. Like I don't know anyone that's ever heard it. I've only seen one set of those on display ever. Uh, we don't have them on display. No, um, I, I heard them. But, oh, I've heard them, yeah, but I'm just right. saying, and, and yeah, because that truck at Knowledge Fest and had it, and, and yeah, it was insane. Yeah, he got so, like three on each door. Oh, yeah, it was, it was yeah, ridiculous. So, anyways, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mounting height and depth from flange. I think we did all that. Uh, for the sub? Oh, how deep are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so from the flange, all right, hang on. Here you go. All right, so mounting depth on this guy is two and three eighths, two and which three eighths. It's, we knew that. Go to this one. And then mounting depth on this guy is three and five eighths. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you can see the difference here. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So, and even, it, no matter what you do, this is still going to be shallower. Oh, yeah. So it really doesn't matter. There's no competition there. Keep in mind, this woofer double the price with that woofer we're just showing this as an example i'm not doing an apples to apples comparison no, 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 i'm more no. or less just showing we're the showing benefits you. of this particular shallow driver as opposed to the conventional shallow driver it's not anything against this woofer don't care this is a standard shallow mount that everyone builds i just wanted to show this now pioneer builds something well, they used to. They don't anymore. They've gone to this design as well, too. They used to have the IB flat, which was similar to this, although the magnet was on the bottom, um, and it had an air chamber and all that other silliness, but it was real shallow. It had a big hole in it, too, so it had to be vented, which means it has to sit off the floor. There's no vent here, okay? So there's no vent at all on the bottom of this, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas this, this has a vent, which means there has to be air there, so you can't mount it like that all right so you still need another inch underneath that a eh, half inch at least underneath this nothing to replace the stock sub uh, on the dodge ram i don't think so have, have what have we ever or no, use like that the, i mean somebody asked 
this fit in the Ram 1500 to replace the stock saw? I don't think so. Oh, underneath the seat. Yeah, why wouldn't it? Yeah. If it's a 10. This stock saw? Yeah, some of those, remember they have that one box? It's, it's an odd one. It's kind of like the chargers that have this up in the back corner that apparently everyone has, according to Paul, that none mm -hmm. of them actually have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll see why not. Okay. Yeah, the screwdriver's they back. From, this is a 12. They make it from a 10. Yeah, they do make a 10. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the audio control EQS? Yeah, awesome. It's analog. You know, sometimes analog is nice. Um, we, we had that conversation, I think, last week, and I had that conversation. When I was at, okay, so. In the audio control video, which reminds me, let's, let's talk about audio control real quick. Thank you for bringing it up. If you go to the YouTube video, mm -hmm. okay, on audio control, don't go to the Facebook video where we talked about it. There's some guys that might not have been listening all that well. Um, and make a comment. So go to the audio control video YouTube. from Monday on YouTube and watch the video and make a constructive comment in the, the notes below. And that's going to make you eligible to win this guy here rotate there you go this guy here the autographed lc 1.800 so we have the autographed version of it um this is the whole panel is signed by everyone if you watch the video at the very end you see everybody signing it you could win this amplifier you just have to go to the youtube video and make a comment and a constructive comment, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see, things like that. Make a comment. And in February, we're going to do, we're going to read, we're reading all the comments. Whoever has the comment that they like the best, meaning Fernando, Haley, and then we're going to have Chris oh, pick. Win. No, we're going to have Chris pick out of the narrowed down pool. Whoever has the best comments is going to win. All and right? Now, keep in mind, this is about the product, right? Um, I was reading some of the questions and some of the comments, and it's like that doesn't make sense. Well, you there's know? always going to be things that don't like make this sense. Guy, but uh, that's okay. Hey, it, talk I mean, about the tools. We don't care about the tools. Like, oh, you mean like the Ryobi tools and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. No, like, no, that's fine though. I I like that question. I, I, it was good because the comments that came from it were good. Like some, it's not the tool brand that matters. It's correct. the person using the tool. And he nah, got, but we not we not installing uh, seats in here. You know, it's just surfboards. Yeah, they don't. Small they don't stuff. need anything other right. than right. We don't need an impact over here. So yeah. other than that, no. This is not the whole thing of the CES. It's a lot of stuff coming in general. But like right now? No, no, no. I'm just saying. Like the show last night. For us, yes. I mean, the show last night was what we know. But it's a lot. A lot of stuff on the car audio world. The the, the these people coming out. So if you want to see more. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there again, a lot of companies just don't participate in CES anymore right. because it's it's not that important to them. They'd rather go to SEMA or they just rather release stuff every day of the week. Okay, so back to the conversation uh, and what brought up the audio control. So in that meeting where they're signing that, autographing the amplifier, there's a whole part of it that, of course, didn't get filmed, and that was – uh, the Q&A portion of my visit. A lot of the times when, well, most of the, every time when I go visit these places or they bring people in, we there's a Q&A portion to it, meaning they want to know, first off, they want to know questions like, like you guys have asked us, mm -hmm. feedback, um, things that we've experienced. They just want to uh, tap into the, the, the information flow mm -hmm. uh, because they don't always have access to it because apparently they can't go on the videos and read. Um, so, and, and we read the comments. We don't always reply, but we read, you know, it's like there's only so many hours in the day and hundreds and hundreds of comments, but we read a lot of them and between the two of us. So yes, there's always a Q and A portion when we visit these companies. And one of the things that came up in that was how Alex um, and it really made me think for a minute because like the, D, the DQ61 and the DQDX, those are two um, processors that they make in the sense that they're both analog. They have analog EQs built into them. The DQ61 is a high level version. The DQDX is a RCA input. Steve uh, me just did a video uh, gain setting with the DD1 Plus on the DQDX. Uh, and with all his audio control amplifiers that he had set up on his bench, if you're not familiar with the products, you could definitely go, uh, Steve Mead, maybe you've heard of him. Anyways, you can go check out the video he just did with the DD1 Small Plus. Time. 
Small, small channel. I mean, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> joking, joking. Yeah, anyways, kidding, um, anyways, but there's a good place to go if you want to see a DQDX in action. Um, but what's cool about it is we, you know, we get caught up in DSP, DSP, DSP. I mean, you know, uh, flip. So, like, um, somewhere up here underneath this picture of my, my, my running that my mom made me, um, thanks mom, is a DM810. Uh, you have a DM810 in your car right now. Uh, DSR1s. Uh, we have a stack of Prima DSP amplifiers. We have the Zabco. We have the Arc. We have the Alpine. We have the Mini DSP Helix. Uh, over here, we have the Phoenix Gold. We have the Q-Class. The Kicker Key. The Kicker Key. So, you know, we have all these digital DSPs, which is our goal. Our goal is to get as, our hands on as many of them as possible and play with them uh, so that we can then report to you and, and help you guys out. However, sometimes you just want to put an EQ in a car and keep it simple, stupid. And the DQ-DX and the DQ-61, they have basic, um, they have basic uh, delay. So they'll add delay to the passenger front speaker, or they add delay to the front and to the rear subwoofer. Just so two, two channels of delay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it gets you into what delay is. And they have analog EQs. Right. So they have a front EQ, a rear EQ, or uh, one main EQ, three and four EQ, and a sub EQ. So there's there's three EQs there for the six channels. And it's easy yeah. to set up. I mean, you can just go in and there's dials you can turn and you can get an immediate reaction and you don't have to plug in a laptop. And it gets you into understanding what EQ is on a high quality level mm -hmm. and also a basic understanding of how to dial in time alignment. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, these are relevant pieces of yeah. product that are, are like... You don't need a degree in a laptop, Windows, or Mac, or you don't have to download crazy software. You can just put it in, and, and like within 10 minutes, you're using it. Yeah. You know, you don't, there's not hours of setup time and, and running pink noise with RTAs plugged in and, and a workbench and, and doing this and looking at, you know, you know, get the phase right. So, polarity, make sure all the polarity is right in the car, oh, yeah. and then go. <laughs> So they're really neat, and, and like the, the EQS, is, it's an EQ, you know, and it, it's basically, they took the EQS and they morphed it into these two products, and that's awesome. It's like the LCQ1 is another one of these products, so like the LCQ1 is what turned into the DQ61, so they took that and they said, hey, um, let's add some timeline feature to it and we'll add input output gain structure and then boom there we go yeah and it's like yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm totally down with that I just All right. yeah what do you think about the Alpine X or the Morel 692s oh that's a good one yeah oh hmm I don't know man it's I mean naturally my first answer is always is what Morel yeah um so we just did the 692s yesterday, mm -hmm. and those those sounded so good. That was really good, yeah. And they, they're definitely, as far as cost goes, they're cheaper than the X-Type. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because I think they're more in the R-Type price range. Mm. You know? Oof, that's a tough one. I think, okay, so it, I think it, the easiest, all right. The X-Type tweeter is going to have a higher frequency response than the Morel. That would be the only, like, <clears throat> difference that I can think of. Um, they're neodymium, so, you know, it's like, yeah, the 692 has, or, or whatever, 691 has a bigger magnet, obviously, because it's, an, you know, a, uh, a, an earth magnet or strontium, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, standard, big magnet. Um, Mid-base, I mean... I don't know, man. It's That's just tough. A, yeah. You know, because that mid bass on that Morel is so strong, but then it's the it's got the Morel tweeter, which is very soft. Hey, what's up, Victor? Um, and this the the Alpine X type because it's high res has to play up to um forty forty five hundred forty five thousand hertz, mm -hmm. but it does it very nice. It's not like the Pioneer that just like makes you just 
oh yeah baby that's so great um whereas it's a little it's a lot smoother than the than the pioneer but i guess if i was to have to like pick a physical difference it'd be that alpine probably plays up a little higher than the morel does if you're talking about a flat signal coming into them not that you can't push the morel to to go high like that you can um but out of the box i think that the that the alpine is just going to play brighter than the morel yeah um um, but I yeah. think the Morel mid base is nicer. There you go. Uh, the it's Pioneer, impressive as shit. The yeah. Pioneer nine inch, yes, they're gonna come out with a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, yep, that's pretty cool. And there, um, yeah. So, as it stands, um, is do we know if the Kenwood's gonna have wireless? I believe so, man. I mean, I would think it has to. Yeah. I don't know. See, that was the thing that kind of irritated <clears throat> me about Kenwood is that they didn't have. They didn't give me any information on that. They gave me information on speakers. They gave me information on high-res backup cameras, dash cams, mm-hmm. um, which I'm not supposed to talk about, but whatever. Um, and they didn't give us anything on that particular radio, which kind of, to me, sucked because that was honestly the only product I cared about. I wanted a Mechalis, uh WR uh, unit, mm-hmm. um, which they came out with. I'm sorry, an XR unit. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said W. I wanted a, a Mechalis XR unit, which they have now, so you're going to get at the high uh, 1280 by 720 screen and a unit that doesn't have a drive, which is perfect right. because that was the one thing about the 9906 that irritated me is that I, I don't need a spinning media in it. No one is going to use it. Take it out. And so we right. have that. That'll be great. And then I wanted the floating radio. Not that I'm a fan of floating radios, but everyone else seems to be, so... Why not get in the game? Yeah, yeah. why not? Mm-hmm. You know? I, I am so cool. But I hope yeah. it is wireless because wireless is, is the is Right now, wireless it is has the to bomb. be a wireless. I mean, I love it. I get in my car, put my phone in the door. I have a little pocket in my door that I keep my phone because it's too big to keep in my pocket and it irritates me while I'm driving. And, uh, yeah, it just sits there and all my stuff comes up. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, Android Auto is, is the bane of everyone's existence, but CarPlay with this latest iOS, whatever, 11, is is not the smoothest thing that has been out. I think they've done a better job in 10 and below than they've done with 11 and up, but, you know, it's still, when it works, it works great. When it doesn't, well, then I hold the phone next to my ear. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Uh... Let's see. Hey guys, any ideas about the wine issue? The wine issue? Yeah. Whiny. Whiny issue. Whiny issue starting after uh, slingly. Slightly. Uh, Lengthening okay. the ground cable. Only from the RCA connection. I also checked the Bluetooth and optical connection and no whining. So, if it does the RCA. Better RCAs. Better RCAs. Or maybe you have a good, good RCAs. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and the uh, problem is the product, you know? Yes. Sometimes it's the amplifier. Believe it or not, RCAs make great noise filters. So, um, you know, when you, when you have a really high-end set of RCAs, they tend to pass everything. So, like, yeah. you know, when you go with, you know, a 9,000 series RCA or an 8,000 series RCA, they pass a lot of information that you might not necessarily have heard before, as opposed to, let's say, uh, a more inexpensive or lesser series RCA. They act as great noise filters. They're still it's, directional, but they act as great noise filters. It's funny that the cheaper RCA act like a noise filter. Yeah. It's insane. So, Which yeah. isn't a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. It's not good or bad. It's just a thing. You know, I, I like how people... Most people want to take a side on something. This isn't anything I'm taking a side. It's just how oh, things yeah. work, and All it's... Right. You know, sometimes that's good, yeah. you know, having yeah, that yeah. noise filter RCA. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, and so, sometimes, yeah. you know, the RCAs aren't built all that well mm-hmm. and they create the problem. So, right. you know, if you, we did, okay, if you want to know more about RCAs, we did an interview with John Canalano uh, last part of the year. So I think in October-ish, mm-hmm. um, and it was all on RCA. So I, and, I, and it was like a Tuesday night and it's on YouTube. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a live show. Yeah. Uh, Ant Man, right. what's if going we, on, Anthony? Uh, if you're using the 4000 RCAs, um, Illusion does make nice speakers, but this is an arc. Well, they uh, make something very similar. They to make that. something similar. Uh, if you're already using the 4000, it's, it's, it 
has Already. to be something that it's making like a ground issue. Or it could just be the product. Right, exactly. Because if nothing else is doing it except for the RCAs, then I would need to know more. Right. I would need to know more. Maybe DM Maybe me they, or something. They, uh, not the on gains Instagram. are too high. Well, nah, but it, well, it no, but it doesn't do it in the Bluetooth. It doesn't do it in the optical. So. Well, the optical's not going to do it. No, it's not. So, because there's nothing there to, to induce noise. So it's out of the processor, into the processor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, the DA conversion is done after the fact. Right. You know, with the RCAs, the DA conversion is done before the fact. So it's something from the source or something from the input on what it's going to. Yeah. Yay! I know, right? It's not a simple thing, right? Did you see Ada last night on Junkyard Empires? No, it was fun. Okay, so here's the funny part. So last night we're sitting there and I'm flipping through the channels because uh, I went to bed early last night. I, I told you guys I was, was going to do. Uh, we did. I pr made three shows on Monday night, so it was like I needed to go to bed. Uh, Hi, Bobby and Jennifer, Bobby's wife. Oh, hey. Um, and so I was flipping through the channels and Junkyard Empire was on, and the girls just got home, and I go, "Hey, this is the show that Ad is on," and we watched it for about five minutes. And then I changed the channel because I wasn't into it. And then I saw a post later on that showed a picture of Ada, you know, doing some table saw action. And I was like, ah, oh, crap, we should have kept watching it. So, no, I missed it. And yeah. I'm sure he'll be bummed about that. All right, let me check this one, Jason. Uh, Pioneer DMH WT86NEX 10.1 HD. Uh, capacitive touch and flooring display has wire and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There you go. I want to know about the Kenwood though. Right. Um, what is the best underglow LEDs and best way to wire them through the doors? Okay, the best way. I mean, Stinger makes LED bars. Everybody makes LED bars now. Right. Right. I don't know what the, we don't I, make. We're not a re we're not a manufacturer. <laughs> I honestly don't know. We don't get any uh, yeah, LEDs. Honestly, LEDs are the bane of HIDs. my existence. Yeah. Oh, I will never do HIDs. We started doing HIDs about five years ago, and then it was like they come back because the transformers are the bulbs. It's like, yeah, screw this. What are you talking about? That are the best. I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a reservice kind of guy. I like doing shit right the first time, and then never do it again. So when the product constantly breaks, it's gone. That goes for anything we do. If, if a manufacturer makes garbage and we put it in and it's a boomerang, I'm done with that. You know, certain products, you know, you learn and you, you figure this play. out and it's like, no, I'm done. I don't, I, don't, I don't have time to keep addressing an issue like that. No, so. because like the profit that you make that day is going to come back and then you're going to spend more time. You can charge people because it's a service, so you right. lose the profit and you lose more money and the time. Well, not only uh, that, but just, you just irritate the end right. user. So I, I don't want to be the cause for someone's irritation. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, people have a hard enough life as it is. Uh, you know, when I, they get I, mad it, of it you. just irritates me to no end. You know, every now and then we'll get a service that is, you know, like it's a ghost. It's a gremlin. It's a ghost in the machine. It's just gremlin stuff. And we're talking about the services. Yeah, like we services. say, you know, uh, yeah. that was not the install. No. You know, it's just sometimes... Oh, it was a loose wire. There's yeah. no loose wires, people. Why people think that <laughs> something is noise is a loose wire? I don't know why. It's every time. Plugs like, in. Hey, I'm thinking it's a loose wire. Uh, Where? Uh, did you ever do any installation with JBL products? In the past, yes. And that was the one brand I forgot to include last night was JBL. Yeah. JBL and I and I've gonna come out with so stuff. JBL just revamped the whole line for 2020, dude. They got a five thousand dollars set of speakers coming out. They're also bringing back the big GTI subwoofer that they've had, mm -hmm. the big monster it's thing. Huge, yeah. That's not gonna be out till 2021, but they've gone ahead and said it's coming. Um, they they also had a DSP that they talked about Correct. or that they showed a picture of, mm -hmm. but it's really weird. It's not like I don't I didn't get it like it. It's kind of odd what the DSP is. It's not a DSP like a box with RCAs and inputs and outputs. It looks really strange. And so, this is what I was referring to. Like, it's more product common about car audio, like JBL yeah. and all that. So, companies. yeah, all so. the Infinity JBL stuff is getting all revamped for 2020. Correct. Um, they've come out with, they have a new power cube thing, base 
hub? I don't, it's not the, pardon me, they're not getting rid of the base hub pro, but they made, like Infinity used to make like this base hub that was like this, like two shoe boxes stacked on one another with a passive radio on one side and a 10 inch on the other and it was ample, pardon me, oh gosh. It was amplified and you would mount it like in the trunk in the corner and it stood up and it was like 12 or 14 by 14 by like 10. And mm -hmm. they have a new version of that coming out finally because I mean like they've been making that for like 20 <coughs> years. Yep. So they have an updated version of that. They have updated versions of all the amplifiers, updated versions of all the speakers. Um, you know, they call them like stage and concert and all that fun stuff. So right. yeah. Expect whole new line, all new lineup of JBL and Infinity this year. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're gonna have um easy way to replace both speakers on a 2003 Silverado with both system. Yeah, actually, it's um, funny now that you mentioned funny that. Funny that you mentioned yeah. that. So replacing them with like something like I want to put some Focals in there. I want to put some Morels. No, there's not an easy way to do it. However, if you just have blown speakers and you want them to sound better, or you just want a, a, an upgrade. Powerbase just came out with a full line of speakers for Chevy. So Powerbase is going to have, and they're plug and play, perfect fit. Plug and play. We we talked about them last night on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so you know you can head over there and check them out. They might already be up on Powerbase's website. Correct. The idea behind it is if is to sound better than factory, uh, but be simple. So a little bit more power handling. So. Oh yeah, the GTI. So yeah, that big GTI woofer, that big gray thing. Now it's black, and it's going to be huge. Um, fly to uh, oh here we go flying into Tampa for my daughter's BMX race in Sarasota in February. It might have stopped by. Wow, they're doing it in Sarasota. What the BMX? I didn't know they had because yeah 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 Jeff said no, that. but that's an Oldsmar. The BMX no, 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 place no, no. is they an Oldsmar. They cancel it. They cancel it, and now they're going to move it to Sarasota. Really? Yeah. Oh. You were there in the show. I wasn't you paying attention. As soon as they said BMX, I passed out. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's Big D Wiz and Vega, you know? those yeah. are That's BMX talk with them. Um, no, Sarasota is about an hour? 45, 45 minutes. minutes to an hour away. Mm -hmm. um, you just hop on hop on uh, the Skyway, it comes right across, and you can get right here, no problem. Yeah. Um, um, I think Jeff is not going to make it because he's in CES. But, yeah. Yeah, power, well, he'll be, that was, that's in February. What are we talking about? No, Jeff I know. I think he's going to be in um, Knowledge Fest or something like that. Oh, I February? Mean, yeah. Yeah, so it, depending it. on when it is in February, we're going to be gone the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Mm -hmm. So that weekend is the only time we're not going to be here. Yeah. Uh, right. New head units on Kenwood. Yeah, so um, like we've been talking about, Kenwood has a new 10-inch floating screen radio. Mm -hmm. And then they – all new head units. So every year the, the Japanese companies always come out with new head units. Yeah. Um, the big feature on the new head units, which we're only talking about the three that really matter, in my opinion, which are the WR series, which is the high-end radios, because mm -hmm. let's be honest, if we're going to buy a radio, you might as well buy the best one you can um, to, to get the best sound possible, is that the big feature is LDAC. So they're getting the Bluetooth LDAC chip, which I'm pretty sure is that, that right. we have from right. Moscone, right. is the LDAC um, chip in that Bluetooth set. So, yes, and if that's the case, woo, baby, right. you're going to have some Bluetooth right. that doesn't suck, finally. All right. Uh, can you hook aftermarket amplifier to those power bass speakers? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Throw a nice little kicker key in there. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, baby, which is getting a new. So, last night we talked about the new kicker key. Uh, same power, just uh, Fernando went back in, not this one, theirs. Went back in and redesigned it, updated it, and, and you know, obviously they refreshed it. It's been out for like two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. I know, it's hard to believe it's been that long on the yeah. kicker key. Yeah. Um, but now, that obviously, there's better components Improved. that they can get into yeah. for the same amount of money. The components they were using went down in price, and new ones came out. So you always want to, you know, a product like that, you always want to go back and refresh and redo and and you know readdress so because they came up with a new kicker key 500.1 yep. with auto it's setup awesome. and yeah uh they went ahead and just revamped that amplifier so now you're gonna have the four channel the mono block you can do that cool <laughs> dual <Crazy>. amp <clears throat> five channel yeah. setup that will do everything for you and fit in the palm of your somebody hand somebody asked about if you the 500.1 key is gonna come out with the microphone no, it doesn't. It so. does. No, it doesn't need it. It does it through signal. Right. There so you, you play a test tone from the head unit. It reads the test tone and automatically sets it's up. It's three hundred, three hundred watts at two ohms and five hundred watts at one ohm. So. Um, are any of the new high-end shallow or Kenwood radio shallow? Um, I need one for my nineteen ram. So I'm thinking. Okay, so there's three W. 
three X. Why do I call them W? Three XR radios coming out. The for the two that are replacing the the two that exist. You have a nine nine seven and a nine nine zero seven, and they had a DMX, which is the nomenclature for Mechalis, coming out. That one I believe is going to be short chassis. So if we get one, that's going to be the short chassis. Mm-hmm. And that bell rings the time we have to go because that okay. means our two o'clock. This is, our this noon is the is here. La- yeah. Okay, go ahead. One this last question. This is the last question. Uh, why is not good idea to install different size subwoofers into the same vehicle? For example, say I want to install two uh, two fifteens and two ten inch subwoofers in a wall. Well, they'd have to be actively crossed over differently. As I'm going to go as, get the truck. Yeah, yeah, go get the truck. As long as they're crossed over differently and they're performing two different frequency responses, you can do it. It's when you cross them both over at the same frequency response, you may run into troubles because you, they, you know, subwoofers are designed to couple with one another. And when you have a 15 and a 10, you get weird sine waves happening. And when you have two strange sine waves, it's just like water on a beach. If you've ever been to a beach and you see a wave come in and then another wave come in from a different direction and then nothing happens. And they just kind of like the water goes flat. That's typically what happens with sound when you do two different size woofers. However, if they're made to play two different frequencies, so let's say you use the 10 inches more of a mid bass and then the subwoofer was allowed to play just subwoofer. You're not going to have that problem. I hope that makes sense. And that's it for right now, guys. We're going to head out. we got a truck to do. If we come back on later today, who knows? We might, at the end of the day, show the progress we had on the Toyota that we're working on. We're putting a bunch of neat stuff in it. So we got a uh, set of three-wave or twos going in, um, big audio control, amplifier power on those, another one power on the subs. So we might come on later today or just come back tomorrow morning because it's here for two days. You guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you go back and watch the beginning of this when we talked about the the shark uh, arc shallow woofer. Okay, see you guys. Bye. Woo! What what are you wooing? Uh, well, everybody, it's just a Friday. Woo! We're not working tomorrow. What? Here we are. Everybody says. Oh. Not uh, me. Yeah. Not yeah. me. Not me, bro. Not me, bro. Not me, bro. Yeah, no, we're working tomorrow. It's a Friday. Hold on. Well, sorry, I wanted to come on earlier and show you the, the, the Toyota that we finished. I guess you're just going to have to deal with pictures. We um, kind of ran out of time, and then Paul booked another job right after it. So I was like, oh, crap, chocolate salty balls. Yummy. Um, so here we are. Yeah. Hey, Dean. Hey, Dean. This, this I don't know what he's saying, but yep. so looks like taco. Are. So we were just talking about Speedy Gonzalez and all those comics from from their youth and how like how you can't get away with those anymore, that type of humor. That would be bad. But hey, oh well. Mm -hmm. You like Speedy Gonzalez. I love Speedy Gonzalez, man. Yeah, by seniors. Yeah, see? I like Speedy Gonzalez. Hey. What is that? Find it. Oh! Yes. Check it out. Oh. Woo! So I've been looking for this cable for like since oh, Monday. Yes. I you found this it. cable. Yep. Check it out. It. So it? I needed a USB C cable, hold that, to run the DMRTA. It's a printer to USB C because Apple only takes USB C. Oh, it's right there. I put the cable here so I knew where it would be. Nice, but right? But you took the DMRTA out. Yeah, I didn't look in the drawer. I literally just took the DMRTA out. And uh yeah, so found the cable. Hmm. I was thinking apparently when I put it in and I haven't thunk since. Are you missing the tone generator? Um, no? It's right here. Okay. Right oh. here next to our California lanyards. What is in the back? California lanyards. So when we go to really? Knowledge Fest Cali, um, anyone that stops by that Thursday to say hi. Knowledge Fest. February 6th at Knowledge Fest. Any, anyone that's in the area and stops by or anyone that's going to Knowledge Fest that's in the industry, we're going to give you a lanyard. So... Yeah, that's this one. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. All right. Nice. I know. Maybe if there's a couple left over, we'll mail them out after we're done. But, you know, because we know that not everyone's going to be in California and all that. We get it. We get it. We give away a ton of stuff, so it's all good. That's a coma, you guys. Worked on. Sure is great looking truck. It was cool. I liked the sticker on the top. That was pretty neat. Well, because that's his. Oh, well, it still was cool. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was sexy. Yeah, exactly. Millennials. Easy, Bobby. 
it's just pretty much everybody nowadays. Everyone's picking up their bad habits from what the up, what millennials. Up, what up? Hello from California. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I appreciate the help earlier, Dean. Oh, hey, if I helped, uh, and, and that's cool. I, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> but, yeah, cool. And if you guys don't got a... I mean... I'm coughing. We have a uh, kind of issue... We do have an issue? Uh, what kind of issue? The early video this morning. Oh, well, yeah, but we put that up on YouTube. I know. I'm I, don't, I, don't think, I think it kind of worked itself hey, out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Those lanyards no, are looking... Oh, dude, let me tell you what. I'm really excited about it. Every year... So, the story behind the lanyards is every year when we go to Knowledge Fest, we create a lanyard to take with us. So, the first Knowledge Fest we went to, which was Dallas... Mm -hmm. I, I keep them right here. They're, they're always hanging here. Was just the lanyard that we had, we've had forever, which is this, this guy... You know, <coughs> real generic, simple lanyards that we just made. And then the second one we went to, I made this one, which is commonly referred to as the Van Halen lanyard. And then this one is what we call the Superman lanyard, just because it's like the colors of Superman and it, it, it's got this cool little uh, circle effect on it that goes from light to dark and kind of looks like a Superman. So this year, uh, because we're going to be there with audio control, we wanted to come out with like a circuit board kind of look. So audio controls colors are black, blue, white, and silverish. Because so we use their colors, and then because they're into the whole like building stuff, we wanted it to kind of represent their thing. So that's that's audio control. We don't know who's going to take care of us at Indy. Probably. So we just went for what. Indy is, which is NASCAR, which is racing. So this was a really cool racing stripe that we found on the internet and I copied. And so it's this is gonna be the Indy race car lanyard. Um, so yeah, so when we go to Indianapolis in March, we'll, be have, we'll have those to give away. So, and then if you know, if you're in Florida and you ever stop by, <coughs> that's what these are for. So these are the Van Halen lanyards. We had a bunch of those made. And so when you come by and say hi, we always give you a lanyard for stopping by. <coughs> and pretty much any time we do a giveaway, we always throw lanyards in the box and stuff All right, like which so. one will you choose? The uh, Alpine ILX 309 or the 650? ILX W650 or the Halo? Yeah. That's like not even... What? Which one you choose? Just that. Okay. I choose, since you're asking, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a W650 and I'm gonna get the PXE0850 DSP. That's what I'm buying. I'm mm -hmm. buying that combination because I really don't care how big the screen is and I want it to sound awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use that. There you go. Yep. How do you jump I it? take the 650 because I don't like the fluorine radius. Uh, as far as stickers go, you can get stickers. Um, What's, do you remember the sticker URL? Uh, or mail address? Email? Five star stickers? Five star at, stickers at Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Yahoo. Five star stickers at yahoo.com get your stickers. You just go email, five. go to the five. The number five star stickers. It's up there. Grab grab the grab the sign. Uh, grab the sign. And you, you just email us your address, and then Sue gives you three stickers in the mail. Two small ones and a big one. Um, as I say, it's got to be there. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> Chalking on those, or coughing on those chocolate salty balls. Is it there? There it is. Hold on. Let me float it around. There you go. So it's in. So if you go to five star stickers at yahoo.com, give us your home address. We'll send you out three stickers. They come in an envelope. That's why you don't get a lanyard because envelopes only cost me. Support of the show. Oh, give me a break. Oh. Lanyards only cost, or I'm sorry, uh, stickers only cost me, you know, what, like, what, however much a stamp costs now. Hey. So. Uh, you can't even see it. DNFToolDrawer.com. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's a cool place. Uh, thank you. Five. Yep, yeah, five. Well, yeah, but it's 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 spelled out though, isn't it? How is? Anyways, no, no, the five star stickers thing. Yeah, it's five star stickers. But it's spelled out. Yes. Five star. Yeah, so it's five. It's spelled out, Bobby. It's, Without. Yeah. No so number. no number. All right. Again. So it's this. Five star stickers at yahoo.com. Sticker. 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 Sorry. Sticker. sticker. You get stickers, but it's sticker. So if you go there. Give us your mailing address. Sue will get you out some stickers. Doesn't cost you anything. Sue is the best. Uh, do you guys use audio normalization on Spotify? I don't use Spotify. I use Apple Music. Um, so here's the thing. 
like I had Title for a little bit. Title was cool. I didn't like the user they interface. Kind of sucked. Um, Amazon is now starting to do Amazon high res or high end, higher end streaming stuff. Spotify has that now too. So when we're tuning a car, we use uh, Audio Frogs Pink Noise, which is by far the best Pink Noise track I've found. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's like 10 minutes long. I'm sure he just got it from someone else. Um, or I use the My Disc from Sheffield Labs. You can get that. But, you know, most people are using Spotify, Apple Music, or Pandora, or something like that. Yeah. So it does us no good to tune a car with, like, the most high-res of high-res stuff because that's not what they're listening to. So we try to – I'm cheap. I use Pandora. Exactly. So we try to tune a car to, to, the, to what they're going to be listening to because it does us no good to tune a car using, like, super high-end, you know – it's pointless. So you have it's to know your audience and what's yeah, listening to it. That's right. Uh, that's just like putting 4K videos up on uh, YouTube in order for people to watch them on their phone. All right. Ask Alban, why is there not a restyle kit for a Chevy Colorado, please? Because they've pretty much given up on the restyle campaign. I mean, let's be honest. Other than the Jeep, they did not. They have not introduced a restyle. Period. They're done. It's gone. I don't think you're going to see any more restyle. It was expensive. It was a waste. Um, and they're just going to floating radios. Mm -hmm. So now we have the 11-inch floating radio. The Halo's done wonderful. So everyone just wants a big radio that floats in the dash. So I think that's what you're going to see is a big radio Happy that floats year, in the man. dash. Um, I would check if you want that look like a big screen in the dash, mm -hmm. maybe check the Pioneer with Metro. Metro might make a dash kit for a Colorado that you can put the Pioneer 8 inch that's mm -hmm. all flush mounted. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would I don't know. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. How accurate is the RTA app using in a using in a phone? Well, the phone obviously has f limited frequency response and the high and low frequencies. So, you know, being able to get like an external mic of some kind, yeah. like uh, that, hold on. Um, you can pick this up for, I think, like 140 bucks from Audio Control, the UTES mic. This will work. Studio 6 Digital. This will work. It, it's sold through Audio Control. So this is, this is it here. It has a USB. It comes with a USB-C and a micro USB. Um, you can use it on any device. You have on the back here, it explains to you all the things you can use it on, iOS, and what you'll need. So it's one mic to rule them all. This is what you guys have been waiting on. It works with these apps here. Um, it just says Android apps because it's Android and who knows. But this is what we use if we need something quick and in a hurry and we have to like, you know, just listen to see what the heck is going on, we grab that. So, hey, what's up, Johnny? If you're serious about it, loud and clear is in the house. I was gonna say, is that loud and clear, in Wiley, Texas? Yes, it is. See, I remembered I it that like time. I don't like the Twitter and my T1 component. Okay. And my T1 component said, uh, Hawaii in the house. If be there I this buy summer. the Type R tweeters, can I use the rug for crossovers? No. No. Totally different. Totally different. I mean, yeah, no, characteristics are totally odd. I mean, there again, what don't you like about them? I guess would be the question. Are they too bright? If they're too bright, then, you know. They have the setting right there. Uh, you can turn it down. Three. Yeah, you can turn that tweeter down, mellow it out a lot. Just yeah. go into the, yeah, like you said, just open it up, go in the setting, flick it down. They also have an on-axis, off-axis switch on those. Sometimes yeah. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of stuff to play with if you haven't already to see if you can get that tweeter to sound a little bit more, you know, user happy, make it good. The newest thing with Radio 6, looking how to have you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I reached out to John last week before CES to see if we could get one in here to play with and review. Um, I'm not holding my breath. You know, it's not like we don't do a ton of stuff for them. Just saying. All right. Uh, where's a good crossover point? 12 dB for the Alpine Type S. Six and a half running 125 RMS each, which is a 40 watts over recommended power. I mean, 12 dB is fine. That'll work. I mean, that's that's perfectly acceptable. If there's, yeah, I mean, that's that's cool. Just at the bottom of the mid range. Yeah, 12 dB. Um, 120 hertz is, is should be high enough. I mean, it's a fairly good speaker. I just take a listen to it, see how it sounds, make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. 
Um, tweeters don't sound crisp and clear to me. They are loud, but oh, not to my taste. Mm. What's up, Mike? How's it going, buddy? Did you move down here yet? Um, hello, guys. Ground keeps shaking here. <laughs> Thanks hey, for the entertainment. <laughs> From Mexico, uh, should all the speaker wires be the same length from the amp, or does not matter if one is five feet and the other one is nine feet? Yeah, it does. Okay, it doesn't matter. You're not going to see a difference in something that short at all. It, it happens. I mean, you know, if you, I mean, the factory is the same way. Home audio guys might lose their crap, but they're in a cool little living room and they can put little bridges on the floor and do all that stuff. Um, you're in a car. The, the speaker wire length is the least of your worries, to say the least. Uh, but no, four feet here or there isn't going to make that big of a difference. Um, you know, I mean, I'm the type of guy when I do sub enclosures, I always make the wires always the exact same length and, and cut everything so they're all match up. I've never heard a difference either way, but it, you know, that's, that's just me. But see, the thing is, is why you'd want your high frequencies to the, the, that wire to be the right length is you don't want to have like, let's say a spool of five feet of wire just laying somewhere where it could be uh, a magnet for noise because it, it can it can just suck all that in so you know and of course then you create what's called the wire pretzel so no cut your speaker wires to length it's not going to affect them in any way uh hello guys ground keeps shaking here Thanks yeah i know i wonder hey, if he's man. i wonder if he's in puerto rico, he's probably in puerto rico yeah man. that I sucks good luck and yeah dude and that's some, that's fine. some terrible stuff yeah, there man. what did the doctor say found you guys from my recommended vids and i was hooked new subscriber and fan what's here that, for Jason? sure Cool, thank you. Uh, Falcao K2, oh yeah, there you go, right? Exactly, KX tweeters, all the way. If you want a tweeter that'll make you just go, oh yeah, that's the tweeter. That's that's the bright, bright, really good sounding. Mm. Expensive it's, it's like it's like having a tweeter with an EQ built into it. You know, nice. it's just like it just. I don't know how else to say it, you know. Hello. Oh, you wow. know, okay. Morel is, is nice and natural sounding and Focal is like taking a tweeter that's EQ'd and just playing it, you know, but EQ'd for bright, but the right amount of bright so that it just doesn't fall, there's no falling apart. It's, it's like, a good it's, it's like, it's like gliding across an edge of glass yeah, yeah, with yeah. Vaseline. <laughs> Slick. Anyways. I want to see a, a Lau Tacoma 1620. Full install with two subs, plus I will mind the budget. Hopefully, a rock for amps and speakers in the Pioneer stereo. Oh, uh, okay, I was gonna say that sounds like Victor's. Victor has the uh, Fox Box 210s in his, yep. but it's all powered off a uh, PDX V9. Um, he's got two, I don't remember what woofers we put in that. I don't I don't remember, but it's loud. It's loud it as hell. Loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. It's even louder now. Um, nice and crisp, always. Hey, Bobby. This night tomorrow. Fro says, hi, Bobby. Tizzy tomorrow. Hey, speaking of tomorrow, thanks for that segue. So tomorrow afternoon, on the or tomorrow night on the show, which starts at 6 o'clock over on the YouTubes, it's the live show. We've, we're just getting back and so excited to be doing the live show again on Saturday night. And mm -hmm. this guy's going to take the night off. We're not going to not do a show, though. I have went ahead and found a backup, not Jeff Smith. We're going to have Shane come in from Scar Audio. He's going to fill in for Fernando. He's a buddy of mine. Not only does he work for Scar, but he was a competitor of mine for years and years and years here locally. So it's like, I'm like, cool. We're both installers. We're both OGs. So it's going to be fun to have him here and just kind of like, yeah, have some good times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so, going to have a good time, too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're, so Fernando's going to Hot Rodders, race fans, kids of all ages. It's the monster truck. He's going to see Grave Digger. That's right. Got to tag Sebastian. I wanted to go, but I was like, I'm going to do the show instead. Because we've missed so many. You know, it's a new part of the you year. You know, that would be cool to do the show and the, and the Monster Jam. Really loud. <laughs> what about pro tweeters and mids compared to the regular components? Well, that's just gonna be just loud. 
Yeah, you know? pro tweeters are just loud, man. I mean, just they're just like loud. Crazy loud. Yeah, and they don't necessarily sound good. They're just loud. You know, it's it's a big dome with a horn in front of it mm-hmm. just screaming at you. That might be something you like, though. I mean, plenty of people like them. We know this because we sell a ton of them. <laughs> but they ain't for me. Yeah. I, I mean, when we do them, we usually get the Neo ones. They're kind of stacked like this. I know Scar sells them. I know... Dude, Hertz has. Remember that set of Hertz we put in? Yeah. Holy Jesus. Yeah. The Hertz yeah. Louds? Jeez, oh, man. Those things were. In the picture, Paul ordered them, and he thought they were just like the regular Scar ones. And they came in, and they're like double the size, and they're just like this massive tweeter. It's like, oh, it's holy crazy. crap. SBL. Hertz SBL. Yeah, the Hertz SBLs are mm-hmm. s- just. Trinidad. Hmm. In the house. In the house. Well, hey, guys, listen, we just wanted to stop by and kind of fill you in and say good night, goodbye, good well. As you can see from the clock that's backwards right there, it's yeah. past our time. We want to get the heck out of here. It's been a really long couple days. It's been the week of Toyotas topped off with the cherry of okay, a that, Tahoe. That clock is slow. It's, it's slow. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just too it's hard to that. figure out the time. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to let you guys go. See you guys Thanks tomorrow. so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. If we don't see you on the five minute with five minutes with five star, uh, we'll definitely see you at six o'clock uh, we'll on the you YouTube live. Yeah. All right, guys, Bye. have a great night. Don't forget to spade new to your pets. <laughs> yes, it's Friday night. Good call, Johnny. Uh, I was watching a sheriff commercial yesterday where he was talking about that. It's a really good commercial where they talk about all the things that you've lost, all these people have lost in their lives. Like one guy they had on there lost his vision. Another guy was in jail for 10 years. Oh, wow. And it was all from DUIs, you know, either killing somebody or doing something stupid. And, you know, when I was younger, um, not that I drink or have drunk. I mean, I've drank it before, but I can still count them all on one hand. Anyways, um, now with Uber and Lyft, as I've said a million times, they're cheap, man. 20 bucks for an Uber or a Lyft. Who cares if they steal your credit card? You're still not in jail or dead or killed somebody else. So, party on tonight, but be safe. Designated driver or an Uber or Lyft. It's Friday. I don't know what that means. means, All right, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.